After e4, c5, knight f3, e6. Black is playing the e6 Sicilian, so we're going with knight c3. And now let's look at knight c6, one of the main moves. We go on with d4, and after take, take, queen to c7. So now we play bishop e3, and in the previous videos we went through the options of development of the bishop. Bishop b4 and bishop c5, and how to punish that straight away. In this video we're going to go through another move, which is knight to f6. The black player doesn't commit the bishop to any of these moves, because as you remember from some of the previous videos, it's just wrong to do so. You're going to punish that immediately. Knight f6 comes now, and black here typically has an idea of putting pressure on this pawn, playing a6, b5, b4, kicking the knight away to attack that pawn. Basically, we're going to be playing something like f3, according to the usual setup. However, the move I recommend to continue now is f4. And now let's explore a few things that could, up, that could happen. Let's see, if black plays a passive move, like bishop e7, this is actually one of the mo most popular moves, because you see here you will just develop the bishop ready to castle and uh, do things traditionally. Here now you can already punish that with e5. Now, the knight will have to move. Knight g4 or h5 is not possible because the queen, knight g8, is ridiculous. But let's look at it just for a second. Knight to g8, this is, you know, it could happen. Somebody might do this move. The idea would be to play knight h6, explo exploiting the pawn in f4, meaning that we cannot swap the bishop for that knight and damage the pawn structure. Black might play knight h6, knight f5. Um, I have encountered this type of variation sometimes, but it's rubbish. You punish it right now. Knight d to b5, attacks the queen. And after the queen goes to b8, Staying on this diagonal and also keep an eye on the square d6 so that we don't play that knight d6 usual idea. Queen to g4 ends the game. We are now inevitably going to g7 unless black plays bishop to f8 or g6 you might ask. Let, let's look at both of them. Bishop to f8, we've basically played moves that forced our opponent to put both these two developed pieces back in the initial rank which is just unbelievable. Bishop f8 is even worse though, because knight to e4 now, and now knight d6, the, the two knights attacking d6, mean that our opponent will not be able to give us the bishop uh, for the knight and, and, and you know, force our pawn to be in d6 from where it might be targeted in the future, although it's still a good position for white. Now black doesn't make it in time to play a6 attacking the knight, because once we land in d6 with check, we have all the threats of the world, and if black takes, we can retake with the knight. Position evaluated plus 4 or plus 5 at this point. So let's not look at this. Let's look, rather than bishop f8, let's look at g6, which is uh, seems to be making sense. At least the, the dark square bishop, the dark square bishop here, at least is still developed. And black technically could play knight h6 now and then castle. It's, it's pretty ugly. Um, but let's see what happens. Here, we castle long side. And now we have a lot of attack over the d file. The funny thing is that obviously the d pawn can never push because we can take ampersand and the pawn is going, to, is going to be a deadly pawn. So look what happens after a6, attacking the knight. The, the black player says, you know what, give me this knight in d6. It's a tremendous knight, but at least I'll take back. You can take back and uh, the game might continue. Well, this is terrible because knight d6, bishop takes, pawn takes back. And now white has an idea of playing bishop to b6 and then queen to h4. From where the queen will be. Attacking the dark squares. Obviously, there's a knight in c6, so that doesn't seem like it's going to happen. But why is this position evaluated plus 5 or plus 6? It's because black can't move. If you get to play a move now and play bishop b6, this pawn, these pawns, none of them can really move or do anything that makes any sense. After queen h4, the knight is defending the 8. Yes, that's true. But you can play g4 and then f5, open the files, and then get the, get the rooks to play on the, on the open files against the king. That's why the position is evaluated plus 6, is because black can't move anything at all. So let's go back here. In this position, we said we're planning to play bishop b6, queen h4. What if black develops the knight? The problem with this move is that the black, player, the black knight is not supported by the g-pawn, as it should usually be. Now you just play queen h4, and you're attacking it. And now, you, you know, it, it will have to move again. So this is just not working. So in this position, uh, just a couple of moves ago, we went through a6, right? Now, after castling, long castling, a6 is really bad because you're going to play knight d6. What if black comes immediately with an attack on the queen with knight to h6? We can't really play queen h4 because there's still a bishop attacking that square. So we play queen h3. And now, knight to f5, and the knight is now safe from the attack of the queen. The black player might even think of castling. Um... And also, most importantly, the knight now in f5 is protecting the square d6, meaning that black has an extra attacker to that square. 
Well, we add an extra attacker as well, knight to e4. And now a move like a6, does it finally work? No, because knight check. Knight takes back, knight takes back, bishop takes back, we take back with the pawn, and now, again, black is completely paralyzed. Doesn't have a single move that makes sense, and we are going to infiltrate here. Don't is going to stop us from doing this. Let's say, for instance, black playing b5, just a random move, typical move to get the queen out and maybe pushing the pawns and then hopefully hope, hoping to put the bishop in the fianchetta which is the only square from where the bishop is developable but you just play queen h6 our opponent has just lost the right to castle so that's not going to happen what if black doesn't play that move like b5 and rather plays castle before we get to play queen h6 and win the game like that it looks like this king yes it's not very safe because of the dark squares but it might last but look at these three pieces in the background look how stupid they look the move for black, for white now is queen to h6, and as you can all tell, a checkmate is coming straight after moving the pawn to f5. Like if we, let's say if it was our move again, but there's not, there's not much that our opponent can do without opening up, like f5 by black, for example, will we'll make things, things work, so I'll explain in a second. If we got to play a move now, again, here we will play f5, and obviously taking like this is crazy because then the, the rooks will infiltrate and attack this king if if the pawn gets taken like that then bishop g5 with an idea of going to f6 and then checkmate obviously here you might say okay f6 no because then bishop c4 so everything is falling apart so a couple of moves ago you know we mentioned that we're going through uh, to play f5 what if black plays f5 first and say maybe rook f7 and develop like that and after b5 bishop b7 the, the queen joins the game and we carry on well it's just too late because now you're gonna play h4 and, you know, rook f7 or whatever. Or maybe you might argue, okay, rook f7, rook f7, you just play h5. And after taking, and then the queen will have an attack on h8. So that's not a good defender in such case. So instead of rook f7, that, that is met with h5, what if black plays knight to d8 with an idea of going to f7 and from there attack uh, very crucial squares and defend himself? No, because we play bishop d4, threatening checkmate. And the knight can't go there to f7 anymore because the checkmate will happen. So black is kind of forced to play rook f8 now. But now the knight cannot go anymore to f7, meaning that we can now play h5. So let's take this from the start. e6, knight c3, knight c6 early on is met with d4, take, take. And, and now queen to c7. Okay, bishop e3. And as mentioned in the previous video, we went through the bishop moving. Knight moving is met with f4. Okay, so we are mentioning the bishop e7 variation, how we play e5 straight away. What if black plays knight to d5? This makes much more sense. However, you take take back, and now knight to b5 attacks the queen. The queen will have to move. The knight is defended by the bishop, meaning that this check is pointless. Although, it's a good idea by black to kind of try to reduce the initiative, but uh, it still doesn't work. Queen a5 check is met with, uh, with, is met with queen d2 blocking. Right, and now obviously, uh, if our opponent refuses the swap and goes back, then the threat I'm about to discuss remains. So let's, I'm about to show it in a minute. Let's look at this first. Queen takes, bishop takes. Now obviously, a6 doesn't work because knight c7 wins the rook. So what if bishop to d8, protecting that for a second? Strangely enough, we castle. This is the best move. Now here, you might want to uh, check, but there's not much that happens afterwards. Yes, you do remove your opponent's right to castle. But this is not as strong as us castling. So castle is the best move. And after, well, okay, a6 is now, you, you do play 96. At least you're fully developed. But uh, let's look at uh, uh, castling by black. So the black player retains the right to castle. He just did it. Okay, bishop e3. And now after a6, the knight is getting kicked out. But we can just play knight to d6. And the funny thing is that it's impossible for our opponent to ever develop the light square bishop on this diagonal. Let's say if he plays b5 with the idea of fianchettoing, he can't really open it like that. But either way, we have an attack on this pawn. We're going to take it no matter what. So instead of b5 to develop the bishop on the, on the fianchetto, not that it was possible because here the knight's attacking it, but black might have played maybe bishop e7 to attack the knight and then play bishop here. But what if black, instead of b5, black plays bishop e7 and just wants to get rid of that monster knight? Okay, well, bishop to b6. And no matter what, we're going to prevent our opponent from developing the bishop and... The, the bishop in d6 will be sitting fantastically, and the pawn in d5 is isolated. We should be able to take it soon. So here, let's take it from the start. e6, knight c3, 
knight c6 early, d4 take take, queen c7, bishop e3, knight f6. So in this position after knight f6 we play f4. And let's once again keep looking at this stuff, bishop e7, okay attack knight immediately, e5, knight takes, take back, and now knight to b5 attacking the queen, we mentioned that the check doesn't really help, so queen to b8, what happens now, okay now we recapture this pawn, and now a move like a6 now attacking the knight is simply met with knight check, and obviously the king can't move otherwise checkmate in f7, so bishop takes, pawn takes back, is absolutely deadly, What's black gonna do now? It can't really move anything. So after castling, for instance, bishop to b6 annihilates any possibility of movements by black. Now let's try to maybe look at this. Knight to d8 with the idea of going to e6 being the only piece that can potentially play. But nothing else plays. Look at this bishop. Look how stupid it looks. So here's some random moves for this position that is evaluated plus 6. After castling, the knight can't really go... I mean, the knight could go to e6, but it doesn't do anything, and you can attack it again. What if black plays rook e8 first? The idea of maybe going to e6 or f8, this is getting ridiculous at this point. And maybe g6, you know, just it's the only piece that can move. It's ridiculous. h3 is the best move. The idea is to play bishop to c4, and then get the rooks on the open file, and trade with this rook. So let's go back a couple of moves. Here... We just went through a6, it's a mistake, we play knight d6, but after take, take, what if instead of castling our opponent plays b5 first, allowing, well, first of all, not allowing bishop to go to b6 because of the queen, and allowing the bishop to develop on a very important and crucial diagonal from where the bishop, the light square bishop, will at least be doing something. Well, too late, because now we can play check, queen e4 check, and when the king moves, at least allowing the rook to come down, long castle. Rook to e8 attacking the queen. Obviously it doesn't work because you can just play queen to d3. But it looks like our opponent can make it now. Bishop to b7 now. Developing. Too late. Bishop b6 check. King moves. Queen to c3. Pin in the knight. Rook to e6. Trying to put double attack on the pawn in d6. If black were to take that pawn the game, the game would be completely open to many possibilities. However, queen to g7 now should end the game. We have a threat in the back rank that is unstoppable now. And in this position, we went through bishop going to b7, which is met with check. It's, it's a mistake. What if black plays knight to b4, harassing our queen first? Too late. Queen to b3 comes with an attack on the knight, also comes with an attack on this pawn. There is nothing to do. a5 by black, queen takes pawn. And, you know, uh, maybe a bishop to d7 now, developing what happens now. Remember that this is check. It's deadly. It's, it's actually made to happen very soon. What if black plays the queen in fianchetto and tries to go tries to develop like that but obviously it's just pointless you play bishop to f2 the idea of playing bishop to h4 and checkmate to happen very soon so let's take a recap now and yeah we we do recaps all the time so that we learn as good as possible d4 take take queen c7 bishop e3 knight f6 f4 bishop e7 is met with e5 knight d5 take take knight b5 Queen goes to b8. And now we recapture this pawn. So instead of a6, which allows us to play knight d6, and it's you know it's a horrible game to play for black. What if castle? Okay. Long castle. And look, we're up a pawn. And our pawn again can't move anything. D6 cannot really happen with the idea of developing the bishop in some some way, maybe bishop e6. Because it's not enough of a compensation for you know two pawns lost. Bishop goes to e6, yeah, it is developing, the, 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 the opponent is developing, but there's a bishop hanging, we're going to move the queen to a4 now, and when the bishop moves, obviously this bishop can't take the pawn, so after bishop f6, looks like black is now developed, Look, this looks like black has got way more freedom than in the previous openings, however, knight to c7 comes now, and that should, should be just too much of advantage for us, what if instead of going to f6, the bishop goes to d8, you might argue the bishop is now protecting c7 a little bit more. Okay, bishop to c5 comes. And the idea is very simple here. I mean, if you play knight c7, bishop takes, pawn takes. The pawn comes with an attack on the queen and the bishop comes with an attack on the rook. You're winning more material. What if black moves the rook to e8 on the same file of our queen? This seems to be making sense. Bishop to c4. The bishop is pinned. Can't move. Uh, obviously, we will take the rook. So after bishop to d7, does black get to finally have some initiative? No, because of queen d5. Surprisingly, 
Obviously, there's a threat on f7 here, but surprisingly, because this allows our opponent to play bishop e6 again. But now, queen to d3. Now, did the black player manage to calm down our initiative, reduce it properly? Bishop takes bishop, queen takes back. Finally, it looks like our opponent has an open file for the rook. The bishop can go somewhere. The knight can be kicked out. And knight c7 doesn't really do much. In fact, after knight c3, the best move is knight... Uh, after a6, the best move is knight c3. Look, this is not like plus 2 or, or something. This is plus 4, plus 5, more or less, the evaluation. Because we have this passed pawn and two pawns advantage. So yes, our opponent did manage to get some development to potentially continue the game. But nothing is going to happen here. We're just going to win a little bit slower, but still. b5 attacking the queen, queen d5. That's it. Let's make a recap now and we can look at a completely different idea. So knight c3, knight c6, d4, take, take. Queen c7, bishop e3. Knight f6, f4. What if black plays d6, by the way? Let's briefly mention this. The idea, this is more solid, but it's no longer e6 Sicilian. This is now turning into some sort of normal Sicilian with d6. And uh, it's going to be bishop e7, castle. And I think black can play like a6, b5, the usual moves. Okay, well, we play queen f3 here. Bishop e7, develop into the only available square. Castle long, castle, knight d to b5. Once again, attacking the queen. Queen to b8, g4 comes. Let's have passive variation, this thing of playing d6 afterwards, because it allows us to play g4 and then g5 and so on. a6 doesn't work because of knight to d4. You just go back. There's no problems at all. And black cannot really play h6 to stop g5. g5 is going to happen no matter what. So that d6 variation isn't really a thing, but I just wanted to mention it. So in this position, so in this position earlier we went through castle, right? Still in the in the later Still, in the late d6 variation, the, the variation we just saw, the king castled uh, and allowed us to play knight b5. What if black plays a6 to stop that from happening? This is definitely better. You play knight takes, pawn takes, and g4 comes anyway. That's the plan. Okay, d5. How do we meet this move? g5. Okay, well, knight to g8, knight is met with bishop d4 is just too strong. Way too strong to me. The position is completely winning. What if knight goes to d7? Seems to be making more sense. We continue the pawn store. h4. Black can't really take this pawn because that allows us to take back. And then black will have a nice rated pawn in c6. This is not how black is meant to play. So let's play normal moves. Rook to b8. Putting the rook on a better file. Potentially of playing the queen down and uh, make some threats. h5. Completely careless. Queen to b7. Going for a threat in b2. Simply b3. Bishop b4 now attacking the knight. This is the type of move that I've, that it's easy to find annoying because it forces you to reply. But knight a4 is just doing okay. The knight cannot possibly be removed from that square. And if instead our opponent, uh, if instead of bishop to b4, our opponent plays queen to b4, well then bishop to b2. Queen check, king moves. That's it. Nothing to fear. Black now is left with the only plan of playing. Well, okay, let's... There's this move, there's a5, and the idea of going to a4 and take stuff, or maybe knight to b6. But either way, if a5 comes, you play bishop c1, and you're okay, you can, it's a winning position. If knight goes to c5, for example, okay, queen e3 is the most accurate move. And after knight to a4, <laughs> exploiting the pin, threatening mate, by the way, here you have to take it. So take, take, and now take the point d5, the attack is neutralized. Take back. Okay, queen e5, going for the pawn in g7 and the rook in b8. One more recap so that we go and see more stuff. Okay, d4, take, take, queen c7, bishop e3, and now the early knight f6. Okay, f4. Let's look at this move, bishop to b4, a move I find annoying because it's pain in the knight, the knight's attacking the, the square e4, and is threatening to also double up our pawns. Now here, the best move is knight to b5 to protect that. And the funny thing is that if black takes our knight to reduce our initiative, you take back with the pawn. You give them exactly what he wanted to. So the reason is simple. The queen is still under attack. She doesn't have any checks and we're threatening knight d6. So what if the queen goes to a5? Threatening this pawn. Uh, threatening to move, you know, force our knight to move. Attack the pawn in c3. The knight still attacking in e4. Okay, knight d6 check. King moves. And now rook to b1. 
The knight can't take an e4, obviously, so the only move will be queen takes in c3, check. And now king to f2, this is our best move. Looks terrible, however, the position is better for white. It's almost plus 2 on the engine. Knight to b4 now, attacking this pawn, attacking this pawn. Well, we play bishop to d4. Completely careless, because you see, when the queen moves, you're going to win the knight. And if the queen goes to a3, then you can pin the knight with the bishop in c5. So, obviously... Here, the, the black player can make a check. Queen takes pawn. Black is up two pawns and he managed to trade queens. But crazy enough, we're still winning. Take the queen. Knight takes back. We're down two pawns and the queens are off the board. However, bishop to c3 dominates the knight. The knight can't move. And we will take the knight as soon as we attack it with any piece. Knight to g4 attacks the king. King f3. And the knight will have to move. Knight f6. Rook to c1. Puts white in a much better position. So this position here, earlier we went through the bishop taking the knight. What if black doesn't do that and rather just saves the queen? We just played knight b5 and the queen goes to b8. Okay, now the best move is to attack the bishop and now we're forcing the bishop to take. Now here it makes sense to take with the knight. For the simple reason that if we take with the pawn, we are not coming, we're not capturing this bishop with the pawn just like in the previous variation whilst having an attack on the queen that was in c7. So if this, if this happens, black can play d5, and we don't have the whole knight d6 thing anymore. So here we have to take back the knight and retain the integrity of the pawn structure. Now here, black cannot just castle. It's a blunder. You play e5. It's exactly the same, you know, very similar to a similar scenario to earlier on. Knight d5, you take, take, take it, blah, 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 and you win the pawn, you know, and it's, it's a terrible position for black. What if black plays a6 to stop our knight from potentially going there and also to play b5? Okay, e5 can come already. Again, the knight should avoid knight d5 because we can take a free pawn, central pawn, knight g8, knight e4. Tremendous position. Nothing stops us from going to the square d6. So knight e7, knight g2, e7. Check, king f8. Queen h5, going for mate. Cheeky. Knight to d8 doesn't stop that because you will play bishop to b6. And, and you're making a threat on this knight. And as soon as you take it, you'll be able to win the, the, the game. But what if black plays g6 instead of that? Well, queen h6 is always available. King to g8, only move. Knight to e8 comes now. Unbelievably beautiful checkmate coming in g7. Okay, you might argue knight f5 stops everything. No, because knight f6 is mate. You totally didn't see that. Okay, one more recap. I'm getting obsessed with recaps lately. So, knight c3, knight c6, d4, take, take. Queen develops, bishop develops. Knight develops, f4. My favorite move in this game. Bishop b4. Okay, knight to b5 attacks the queen. Queen to b8. Attack the bishop. Bishop takes, knight takes back. Okay, what if instead of castling any other thing, our opponent just plays d5 and says, you know what? I have never even moved this bishop for the whole game, for the whole endgame strategies videos. I've never had the honor of moving this light square bishop. Can we please play the thematic d5 move and play on? Okay, e5. Attacks the knight. Knight to d7. Queen to h5. And now what to do now? If black castles, right? Just to make an example. Long castle. None of the pawns moves here make any sense because you can just... Stick around with the queen. These two pawns here are, are making a lot of pressure on, on, you know, on the opponent territory and they're preventing our opponent from moving. Besides, we managed to close the file, uh, close the diagonal of this bishop, and this bishop is still a complete idiot. So a6 by black, the idea of playing b5, b4, and open the game like that, is simply met with bishop to d3, threatening mate. G6 attacking the queen, not a problem. Queen h6, stick around. B5 by black to make an example. H4. And b4 now, just take it. Queen takes back. What's happening here? Are we giving any chances to our opponent? h5. We're going to smash everything around here. And uh, this can't even be taken back. It's going to be inevitable checkmate. Rook to b8, going for b2. Fine. Pawn takes. Boom. How about that? I don't care that you check me in b2 simply because king moves. And there's no checks. There's nothing here. So in this position... After queen h5, we went through castling and, uh, you know, what happens next. However, if black plays d4, this looks like a fork. I forgot to mention this move. d4 looks like a fork. We don't care because knight to b5. 
And remember the weakness in f7, huh? And remember that g6 is pointless because you can play queen h5, uh, queen h6, queen g7, and so on. So here, if we're giving the bishop away, pawn takes in e3, but now knight check, the king can't move f8 because he gets checkmated. King d8, but now check. King to c7, knight takes rook. We're up the exchange, but also we're in a much better position. Here, knight to d4 maybe, going for this pawn. Although it would be stupid because, yes, check, take the rook, yeah, I mean, taking the rook would be great, but to, uh, getting pinned will be stupid. Here, white simply plays queen to d1, this is the best move, attacks the knight, stops all of that from happening. Position evaluated, plus 5, plus 6, or something like that. So we can leave it there.